Today we're out here to answer a very important question. Is a hybrid like this Ford Explorer hybrid actually more fuel efficient when towing a trailer than a V8? This is Ford's all new Explorer and the hybrid system is very different than what we've found in other Ford hybrids before. This has a 3.3 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, a 10 speed automatic transmission, and then a 44 horsepower motor sandwiched between the two. According to Ford, this combination is good for towing up to 5,000 pounds and the EPA rating on this model, which is the rear wheel drive version, is 28 miles per gallon. The competition today is the other mid-size rear wheel drive three row crossover, the Dodge Durango. This one happens to be mine. This is a 2018 Durango Citadel, 5.7 liter V8 engine, eight speed automatic transmission. This one has all wheel drive, which does put it at a fuel economy disadvantage. The EPA rating on this guy is 17 miles per gallon, but I do have wider tires than came stock with this. I put the SRT wheels and tires on this. So we have 295 with tires here versus 255s over there on the Ford. That should put this at a disadvantage because the EPA rating is 17 miles per gallon, but the Durango has been surprisingly efficient towing in the past, and it does have cylinder deactivation, which will certainly activate even when there are trailers connected. Today I've selected my 14 foot box trailer for this test because this is about the same shape as a lot of recreational vehicle trailers. So if you're interested in getting a camper or something along those lines, they're gonna be roughly the same size, shape, and weight. At the moment, this trailer's weight is 4,000 pounds. That's because the Ford Explorer Hybrid's towing capacity is 5,000 pounds when properly equipped. That is definitely below what we find in the V8 Durango. The Durango is 7,400 pounds for 2020, and for 2021, that's gonna bump up to 8,700 pounds if you choose the right options. And of course, logically, if you choose the upper end V8s in the Durango, it's gonna be 8,700 pounds all the time. Clearly, these two vehicles are quite different. Under this hood, we have a 3.3 liter modern hybrid system. And under the hood of the Durango, we have a 5.7 liter push rotted V8. This one also has a 10 speed automatic transmission that's a little bit newer than the eight speed automatic that we find in the Durango. But there are also some surprising similarities. Both of these are rear wheel drive unibody crossovers. Some folks out there disapprove of me calling the Explorer and the Durango a crossover. They wanna use the SUV name. Whatever you wanna call it doesn't really matter, but in my mind, these two are the only true crossovers in this segment left. That's because these are the only ones that really blend truck-like characteristics and passenger car characteristics. This hybrid system is based around the same 3.3 liter V6 engine that we find available in the Ford F-150, obviously not hybridized just yet, and the same 10-speed automatic transmission that we find in the Ranger, in the uh, Expedition, and of course the Ford F-150 as well. And the Durango has essentially the same 5.7 liter V8 and transmission that we find in the Ram 1500, so definitely some truck components going on, but they're wrapped in a rear wheel drive unibody design with independent suspensions all the way around. And when you compare this to something like a Highlander or a Pilot, those have an awful lot more in common with the average minivan than the average truck. Obviously, the first thing you're gonna notice out on the road is the engine braking ability. Clearly, with a bigger displacement engine, we get more engine braking ability in the Durango. That doesn't cause too much of a problem with the 3,000 pound trailer that we have attached right now, however, because this 3.3 liter V6 has more than enough engine braking to be able to take this well below the speed limit, well below the speed that I need to go to navigate these corners here and it certainly has more engine braking than the other hybrid in this segment, the Highlander Hybrid. Let's talk about where my fuel economy numbers are gonna be coming from. I'm actually gonna be trusting the car's computer when it comes to fuel economy, and I have good reason for that. I know some folks out there, like my friends over at TFL Car, and I'm not being facetious there, they really are good friends of mine, they use the fill drive fill method of fuel economy calculation. So you fill the tank as much as possible, wait till it clicks off one click, or you attempt to fill it completely, and then you drive, and then you do the same process. But there's a problem with that. There's always gonna be a slight variance in the way the tank has been filled. Modern fuel tanks and modern gas stations are designed in coordination with one another to leave about an inch or two of space at the top of your gas tank. So when the auto fuel cutoff cuts off, the gas tank is not completely full. The airspace is essential in a modern gas tank for the evaporative emission systems to function properly. So you don't really want gas overflowing the filler neck. And that's the reason when we take a look at research institutions or universities that are doing fuel economy research, they don't use either of these two methods. Instead, what they do is they use fuel cells that can either be weighed very precisely, or they're using very specific volume sets that they can use to measure exactly how much fuel is going on, but they're not generally using the vehicle's fuel tank itself. And my last point here is that I've been driving over 200 vehicles a year for about 15 years at this point, and 
I have had very, very few cars that were off in terms of the fill drive fill method comparison to the instrument cluster fuel economy. In every vehicle that we test here at Alex and Autos, I always do that. I always fill up the vehicle, do a fuel economy loop, look at the vehicle's fuel economy meter, and then compare it to what we get in the fill drive fill method. If they're not off by more than about 5%, I just go with the car's measurement because generally speaking, that's gonna be the most accurate. Modern engine control systems know exactly how much fuel is going into each and every one of the cylinders. That's absolutely critical for modern emissions control systems. So generally speaking, the fuel economy computer is gonna be pretty accurate. I've now come all the way down the hill and we're on the level portion of this towing test. We have the cruise control set to 55 miles an hour because A, that is the speed limit here and B, that is the maximum towing speed allowed in California. Keep in mind that if you're driving out in Texas, then your speed limits could be an awful lot higher when towing and that is obviously gonna affect your fuel economy. Now let's call Tommy from TFL Car. Hey, hey what's going on? I have a 3,000 pound 14 foot box trailer connected at the moment. And okay. Cal California's towing speed is 55 miles an hour. So we have the cruise control set to 55. And we've gone from 1,400 feet above sea level down to sea level on level highway travel for about six miles. And I've just started to climb the hill on the other side to go round trip. What would you think our estimate, our, our average should be right now? All right, so it's rated at 28 empty-ish. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say 16. Oh, hey, 18 so far. Wow, okay. That's not too bad, but it's 3,000 pounds, you said, right? Uh, 3,000 pounds, yeah. So it's not, not, at, not at the limit of this particular one. Um, mainly because the roads that I drive on, if I had actually put 5,000 pounds on it, this one's a two-wheel drive Explorer hybrid, it might have had troubles climbing up some of the steeper gravel roads. So Alex, my question is, you know, is Ford doing enough with their latest hybrid technology? Because if you look at like the Escape hybrid versus the RAV4 Prime, mm -hmm. it's, it's front wheel drive only, right? Yep. It's got something like 80 less horsepower. It's, it's a little bit more efficient and a little bit cheaper, but it seems like there's such a leap behind what, what Toyota's been doing. Do you feel that same way about the Explorer hybrid technology, or do you think that it's, it's going to be enough to attract buyers away from the standard gas model? I'm a little bit more torn on this one. It's like with the, with the RAV4 Prime, I think that Toyota surprised everybody with the Prime, um, yeah. including Ford. But there is... There's hope that Ford could compete because the Corsair is going to have that same plug-in hybrid system with an electric motor in the back and a bit more oomph. Um, so theoretically, they could put that in the Escape at some point. And then with this Explorer hybrid, they just went totally the opposite direction from Toyota. So the question is then is, you know, on, on the lower end of the capability, you can compare it to, like you said, the Highlander. But what about compared to something like your 5.7 Durango? How does it feel on the road compared to a traditional V8 powered SUV? I mean, that's tricky, of course, because this one's 7.6 seconds, 0 to 60, and the Durango is uh, 5.7, as I recall, 5.7 seconds, 0 to 60. So it's a lot faster, um, but it's, you know, 360 horsepower, a lot more torque. Um, Dodge gave it pretty aggressive gear ratios as well. This feels tighter and more European out on the road, and the Durango feels like, um, you know, like you're trying to pilot a whale down the road. Yeah. <laughs> um, but a faster whale. I mean, it can swim, it can swim. You know, she's just not, not gonna go around the corner very fast. And I'm having a hard time kind of justifying the hybrid over the little 2.3 EcoBoost. Yeah, it is a tricky one. And we have just hit the peak of the mountain pass, 2,300 feet above sea level. What do you think our fuel economy is now? Um, I'm going to say 17.1. Ooh, 13.5. Whoa, dude. <laughs> but we've got, uh, we've got 10 miles of level country road and then, uh, and then a thousand foot drop of elevation where the hybrid might redeem itself.
So I'm going to be curious, how is that going to uh, perform going down the hill? Is it going to do any grade shifting on you with that? With that? Is it a 10 speed, Alex? It is the 10 speed. It actually does a pretty decent job. I'm, I like the, the Ford um, integration of, re, of regen braking, etc. So if you just leave it and drive and you, uh, and you start braking gently to slow your trailer down, when the battery gets full, it does start doing grade braking automatically to try and compensate a little bit for that. Oh, I got you. That's interesting. I mean, I think one of the big benefits that you touched on of the Explorer when you're towing like you are is the rear wheel drive. That is a, a big deal over a, a front wheel drive system. I just, I much prefer towing with a rear wheel drive setup. I agree. Um, I agree there for sure. But then I, I'm, I was, I was honestly a little disappointed in this generation Explorer's towing ratings because they topped out at 5,600 pounds. And the only reason I leased my Durango instead of buying one is because I wanted a, I wanted an Explorer. <laughs> and it, is that why you did it really that's that's the on, honest to god the reason i i leased it instead of bought it was because i knew that in three years the explorer would be back and it would be rear wheel drive and i was like yes this is exactly what i want it'll be able to tow it'll be my replacement that's where i want to be and then the tow ratings came out and i said well i guess i'm just gonna have to get a refreshed durango so here's the real question uh let's have a prediction since we haven't we have not done the drive loop for the Durango just yet. Maybe we'll call you back for that. But uh, yeah. what, which one do you think will be better? The Durango 5.7. Mind you, my 5.7 is all-wheel drive, and it has 295 tires on it. So it has the SRT wheels and tires on it. Oh, and this, okay. this one's got 255s, and it's two-wheel drive and a lot lighter. I'm really hoping that that electric system in the Explorer will be able to, to pull out at least a three MPG improvement over the Durango. Okay, so we got, so you're, you're thinking Explorer is gonna be the winner and the three MPG win. Yes, that's my prediction. We're 41 minutes into this drive loop and we've averaged 14.7. We're arriving near the end point. So I don't think it's gonna get too much better even though we're going downhill. All right, dude, well, I wish you luck. Give me a call back when you're in the Durango. I'd love to know what the results are. Yep, call you back in 45 minutes. All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate <laughs> Take it. care. Bye. In our mountain towing test loop, this averaged 15.3 miles per gallon. So now it's time to swap in the Durango and see how it works with old school V8 power. So let's go ahead and unhitch the trailer and get this party started. Everything's hitched up now, and my challenge to all of you watching this video is go down there to the comment section below, and before you finish watching this video, say which one of these two vehicles do you think will be more fuel efficient in this test driving loop from 1,300 feet down to sea level, across, up to 2,200 feet, and then round back to 1,300 feet. Is it gonna be the old school 5.7 liter V8 with cylinder deactivation, or is it gonna be the new, more modern, fuel efficient hybrid? Which one do you think is gonna be better and how much buy do you think that difference is gonna be? Is it gonna be two miles per gallon better than this Durango? Is it gonna be three, four? What do you think it's gonna be out there? The Ford Explorer came in at 15.3. Starting out our trip going downhill, you'll notice that the Durango definitely has more engine braking ability than we find, of course, in the hybrid. 5.7 liters versus 3.3 liters is just more displacement to go with here. But we don't have as many gears to choose from, and you will notice that. The gear ratios in the Explorer, as with the rest of the Ford lineup that uses that 10 speed, they're very close together. So it's really easy to find the right gear that you want. <laughs> And obviously there's also gonna be a difference in the engine noise. This one has that classic V8 burble. I've always loved the way this 5.7 liter engine sounds. It sounds very much like Ford's five liter V8 with the right exhaust on it. It has a very pleasant sound. And that's part of why Ford has of course kept that five liter V8 around in their pickup truck line. And they've even improved it a little bit for the upcoming 2021 F-150. <laughs> We're now essentially at the bottom of the hill, and obviously the Hybrid Explorer is going to be getting better fuel economy at this point. We've been averaging 29.4 miles per gallon just going down the hill again here in the Durango. The Explorer at this point was in the high 50s. Now, there was a logical reason for that, of course, because it's a hybrid and it can turn off its engine. So it's using absolutely no gasoline going down the hill. 
This V8 employs pretty aggressive fuel cutoff in downhill situations, but it's still not going to be completely off like we find in the Ford Explorer. And that's basically the difference there. Also, the Explorer in some of the gentler sections can run in electric only mode, so definitely has a significant advantage there. So we've now finished the level highway travel portion of this test, and I have to say I've been pretty impressed and surprised by the fuel economy here in the Durango. It spends the entire time out here at 55 miles an hour with this trailer attached in cylinder deactivation mode, and that's largely why the highway fuel economy is a little bit better than you might suspect. I've been averaging 22.4 miles per gallon so far. That's really not very far off the hybrid model at this same point in the test. But now we're going to start climbing the hill, and obviously this is going to start consuming more fuel. We're now climbing this hill at 55 miles an hour, and you'll really notice the difference between this V8 and the 3.3-liter V6 that we find in the hybrid. This doesn't have to rev as high because, of course, it's a bigger displacement engine, it has more torque, and that torque happens at lower RPMs, so you really will notice that. This thing doesn't have to rev much more than about 2,000 RPM in sixth gear to keep this vehicle going at 55 miles an hour. Now, as expected, obviously the fuel economy has been dropping rapidly. We're about halfway up this hill or so, and the fuel economy has now dropped to about 15.8 miles per gallon. But there's still a lot of tests yet to complete. Well, we're on the home stretch here, so it's time to call our friend back at TFL Car and uh, see how we went. Hello, hello. Hey, Tommy. So the uh, the drive loop is almost complete. We have two miles to go, but I think the numbers are pretty set. Uh, what do you think? And uh, remember, this is a Durango 5.7 all-wheel drive with 295 with summer tires on it. So uh, wider SRT tires and wheels than came standard with it. And at the beginning, it was EPA rated for 17 miles per gallon combined. Um, I'm going to say 13 and a half. Oh, no. 15.4 and we're still going downhill. Oh. So far it's beating the Explorer by by one tenth of an MPG. I was surprised, like in steady state highway travel around 55 miles an hour or so, this is a lot more efficient than, than the Explorer hybrid because it's spending its entire time in eighth gear with, with four cylinders turned off. It also doesn't need to rev as high to climb the hill. So going from sea level back up to 2300 feet, um, that stretch also proved to be more efficient. Um, it was in sixth gear most of the time at 2,000 RPM versus uh, about 3,500 RPM for the, the Explorer's 3.3. We're, we're almost at the turnoff here, and with the average has crept up to 16 miles per gallon because we're going downhill. Holy cow, dude, that is nuts. The Durango definitely feels quicker. It feels less burdened by the trailer. And when you're, when you're um, just starting off from a stop with just 3,000 pounds on the back, it doesn't really feel like you're towing very much. Um, and it doesn't get pushed around by the trailer as much as the Explorer can. The Explorer does well, but it, it still doesn't, uh, you know, the, the, the Durango's heavier, so it just feels a little bit more solid. We're now pulling, pulling into the driveway so we can finally click off our, our total estimate, which has gone down a tiny bit, 15.7 though, versus uh, 15.3. So yeah, so 32.2 miles, yeah, 32.1 miles, so the mileage is spot on. Um, and then 15.6 uh, versus 15.3 miles per gallon. Well, dude, that is unbelievable. I, I am, uh, I'm going to share that with Andre and the rest of the TFL team because that is a, a really interesting result. As I've noted before, hybrid systems have a little bit less benefit when towing, and that's something that we've seen, for instance, in the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. When towing this exact same trailer with 1,000 pounds less in it, it was about 2,000 pounds going on this exact same route, it averaged about 22 miles per gallon, so certainly significantly more efficient than either of these guys right here, and I expect that would apply to the Highlander in some fashion as well. I would expect the Highlander is probably going to be around that same 22 mpg range if we can get our hands on a Highlander with a tow hitch. Unfortunately, all the Highlanders that are out there from the factory don't have one. There's no factory tow hitch, and Toyota has said that they are not able at this point to install one on it to give it to us for testing. But based on my experience with that same hybrid system in other Toyota products, I expect it's going to be around 20 mpg, perhaps a little bit better than either of these guys right here, but its tow rating is significantly lower. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below, and what would you pick if you're going to be doing a lot of regular towing? 
since we get essentially the same fuel economy and these two vehicles could cost about the same amount out the door. Would you be interested in something like this hybrid right here that could save you a little bit of fuel in city driving or in stop and go traffic? Or would you get the Meteor V8 that would be a little bit better at towing those heavier loads and has a higher tow rating? Again, keep in mind, this is the Durango with a two-speed transfer case, all-wheel drive, wider 295 with tires these are not the oem tires these are grippier three season tires on them with the srt wheels off of an srt grand cherokee and this guy right here has michelin primacy tires on them they're a little bit more of an efficiency focused tire and they're 255 with so definitely narrower tires than we find on the durango and the durango is a little bit heavier i'll see all of you guys later be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen and of course check us out on instagram if you want to see the lighter side of things i'll see all of you later